showing you the slides as, uh, as the book evolves. And then I expect to have it printed, inshallah, in a couple of months. But uh, if you bear with me, some of these slides may be repetitious as far as you're concerned. But uh, this will help me because I do get comments on correcting this or changing that. And uh, inshallah, this will lead to perfection of the book. But uh, before we get to the slides, I'm going to read one verse in Surah 9, because uh, a lot of people sometimes are concerned about uh, the feelings of others. Like if you meet somebody who believes in Hadith, for example, and you worry that you may hurt their feelings, this verse uh, uh, deals with that. Because when it comes to the truth, especially about God, uh, God wants people to be completely sold on Him without absolutely, without uh, no hesitation whatsoever. So uh, the verses in Surah 9, uh, it's number 120. And it reads, I'm going to read it for you. Neither the dwellers of the city nor the nomads should seek to stay behind the messenger of God when he mobilizes for war. Nor should they place their lives ahead of his life. This is because this is, this is what I wanted to read for you, this part of the verse. No thirst afflicts them, or any effort, or any hardship in the cause of God, nor do they make a single step that discourages the disbelievers, nor do they strike an enemy without having discredited to them as a righteous work. God never fails to reward the righteous. Okay, let me put it in plain English. I, I can see that I have to uh, improve the translation. But uh, part of this verse says, they do not do anything that enrages the disbelievers without having this written to them as a credit. So don't worry about the feelings of people who do not, who are not completely sold on God. And uh, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of people will compromise their own convictions just to please others or... Uh, afraid that they may hurt the feelings of others. Actually, you're not hurting their feelings, you are serving them, you're helping them. And uh, now, we shouldn't forget the verse that says you should invite to the path of God with wisdom and uh, nice admonitions. But uh, the Quran deals with all situations. There are situations where you cannot compromise your convictions and you have to be uh, solid on the side of God. And you don't worry about if, if the person deserves to be enraged, then this will, will be written to you as a credit. Could we separate these two? <laughs> if you keep them apart, they will not make noise. Okay, now we get to the, uh, the slides. And this is the latest edition of the book. And I'm going to rely on your uh, opinions and help to modify this. I'm going to turn it on a deep, just push the switch. This is the new title. 
Quran times, our titles are becoming mathematical now. Quran times hadith equals zero. Because if you, if you get the Quran and you uphold it and you follow it, but then you seek any other source besides Quran, then you might you have zero, you have nothing. Also, when, when you multiply anything by zero, the result is zero. Now, there is no salvation without obeying the messenger, and these are the verses. So, when they tell you, we must obey the messenger, you agree with them, and you go even farther than they. You say, yeah, you must obey the messenger. Furthermore, you do not obey the messenger. These are the verses, and we're going to have it printed for you someday. When delivering God's messages, messengers do not speak on their own initiative. And we see this documented in the previous scriptures in the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament. And the Prophet Muhammad is represented by Quran alone. This verse, these verses here from Surah 5, verses 48 to 50, repeat. These verses keep repeating that, oh, my assistant has given up. We keep repeating that we reveal to you, we send down to you this book, and you shall, that is the Quran, and you shall judge among them according to what is revealed to you, which is the book, and keeps, and be aware of them lest they pressure you into deviating from the book, etc., etc. So the Prophet is represented 100% by the Quran. Now this verse is very, these verses are very clear. Now, Muhammad forbidden from uttering any religious instructions other than Quran. See, see this part here? Had he ever... Uttered, let me go to the back. This Quran is the utterance of an honorable messenger. It is not the utterance of a poet, rarely do you believe. Nor is it the utterance of a soothsayer, rarely do you take heed. A revelation from the Lord of the universe. This is an expression that is specific for the Quran. Tanzeel um rabbil alameen. Had he ever uttered any other religious utterances attributed to us, we would have punished him severely. Then we would have stopped the revelation to him. In other words, we would have fired him. None of you could have protected him against us. Therefore, the Prophet did not utter any, any religious instructions other than Quran. Otherwise, he would have been fired as a messenger. Just very clear. Uh, I mean, very harsh, actually, not just clear. Also, you know, this is this is the utterance of an honorable messenger. Some people will tell you the Quran says obey God and obey the messenger. And they tell you God represented by Quran and the messenger represented by Hadith. But we didn't get Quran from God personally. God didn't give us the Quran direct to me or to you. <laughs> I mean, the, the Quran came through Muhammad. So the messenger is uttering the words of the Quran, the words of God. And, and uh, there is a verse that you will see that says, when you obey the messenger, you're obeying God. Obviously, the messenger is not God, but when he's uttering the words of God, that is the Quran, then he absolutely makes no mistake, and we must absolutely obey him. That is the Quran. Muhammad ordered never to deviate from Quran. Deviation meant severe retribution. This is in Surah 17, verses 73 to 75. And uh, it says here, They almost diverted you, Muhammad, from our revelations to you. They wanted you to fabricate something else, to consider you a friend. If it were not that we strengthened you, you almost leaned towards them a little bit. In Arabic, shay'an qalila, a little bit. Had you done it, we would have doubled the punishment for you in this life and after death. And no one could have protected you against us. Uh, very, very harsh words. There's absolutely no deviation from Quran. And Muhammad ordered to deliver Quran alone, without the least alteration, and never to fabricate anything else. Now, these verses speak of the Quran specifically. It says, when our verses are recited for them, those who do not expect to meet us would say, bring a Quran other than this, or change it. Say, I cannot change it on my own initiative. I simply follow what is revealed to me. I fear if I disobey my Lord, 
the retribution of a terrible day. Who is more wicked than one who invents lies about God or rejects his revelations? Uh, when, when we go to hadith, we commit false things. We reject God's revelations that state that Quran is complete and perfect, as we will see. And we follow what is the invention of lies and there is the uh, and rejecting his revelations. Inventing lies and rejecting his revelations, the two things. I'm trying to rush, but I'm slowing myself down. I better make haste slowly. Okay, one God, one source. Our almighty creator commands us, commands that Quran, specifically Quran, shall be the only source of religious teachings. Furthermore, we are told that the acceptance of any other sources for religious guidance equals the setting up of other gods beside God. This is verse 19 of Surah 6. And it says, uh, say, O Muhammad, whose testimony is greater? God is the witness between me and you that this Quran, by name, was given to me to preach it to you and to whomever it reaches. However, you certainly bear witness that you set up other gods beside God by upholding, this is parenthesis, by upholding other sources beside Quran. It's obvious from the flow of the words. Say, I will never do what you are doing. I disown your idol worship. So this verse is very clear, and we're going to see more. Verses one God, one source. In the strictest possible language, we are commanded to uphold Quran, the whole Quran, and nothing but Quran. I should qualify this by saying that the Quran implies also referring to the previous scriptures. In other words, scripture. Repeatedly, we are commanded to uphold the Qur'an as the only source of religious guidance. Again and again, we are reminded that the following of any other source besides Qur'an equals the setting up of other gods besides God. This verse in 1739 says, this is, now after a long list of commandments in Surah 17, this verse comes and says, this is some of the wisdom revealed to you in this Qur'an, and you shall not set up any other god besides God by following any other source besides this source. Quran, an extraordinary book. Despite the clear commandments, why do the followers of Hadith and Sunnah fail to uphold Quran alone? The answer is provided in the same surah following the commandment shown on page 8, previous page. Verses 45 and 46 of Surah 17 inform us that those who refuse to believe God and heed his commandment to uphold Quran alone are deliberately isolated from Quran. And this verse speaks of, of the Quran alone. When you preach your Lord in the Quran alone, they run away in aversion. They just shudder. They, and uh, you probably experienced that before. <laughs> Sometimes people walk into this mosque by mistake. You know, you see the word mask. And they come in here, and as soon as I mention to them the Quran alone, they literally run. Just like the verse says. They can't stand to talk about the Quran alone. But this verse says here, says, when you read Quran, we place an invisible barrier between you and those who do not believe. And we put shields on their hearts to prevent them from understanding the Quran and deafness in their ears. And when you mention your Lord alone, now alone here follows the Quran. When you mention your Lord alone in the Quran alone, the word alone came after Quran. The Quran wahdahu. Quran alone. Do you believe God or not? In this verse, this is verse 38 of Surah 6, that says, We didn't leave anything out of this book. And in this verse 114 of Surah 6 says, God revealed the book to you fully detailed. I got a letter from Egypt to my hadiths who was asking me. If the Quran is, and he used this word, he said, if the Quran is fully detailed as you say, where do we find the prayers? <laughs> We're going to deal with this question later on. So I returned the letter to him, and I told him to refer to this verse. Because he used the very word that God uses in the Quran, Mufassana, meaning fully detailed. This verse says, shall I seek other than God as a source of wisdom? When he revealed to you this book fully detailed,
Now, the people at the time of the Prophet, for example, uh, I'll give you a question, and have you imagined this? What did they think about the sun, for example? Was, was the new sun coming out every morning? But I mean, they didn't know about the earth and the sun and the moon, the information that we know today. How much knowledge did they have, including the Prophet himself? What do you think they thought in their mind about every morning the sun comes from the east and goes in the west? Now, where is it coming from? Where is, it go is it a new sun every morning? or What's going on here? Now, God created the sun and the moon and the earth and the solar system. Did you look at the moon last night? Did you see the two eyes, a nose and a mouth? <laughs> Did you see it? Now, that's God's sense of humor. <laughs> And it provided a lot of poetry for, uh, for the Arab across many centuries. Now, people can think of God as running the world like... Now, I want you to think of God when he was designing the moon. Now, think, uh, just to bring it to our mind, think of a chairman of the board sitting at a desk. And, and this chairman of the board is designing the moon. The chairman of the board says, let us give the people of Earth a satellite, a moon that will light their night certain times and uh, help them calculate the months. Because you can calculate exactly the day of the month by looking at the moon, uh, the lunar year. Uh, well, let's put two eyes and a nose and a mouth in this thing. But uh, the physics of this matter, the moon has to turn around. The moon will turn around itself, right? But now, how, how do we make it so they, the people of the earth will always see one side of the moon, that is the face, with the two eyes, the nose, and the mouth? So let us make the rotation of the moon exactly the same speed as the rotation around the earth. And I give that demonstration to most of you as to why we see one side of the moon. Well, this, this makes us think of the greatness of God and how He designed the creation of the heavens and the earth, and how. How much wisdom did the people of that time, of the time of the Prophet Muhammad, how much wisdom did they have? So we seek that wisdom. Now, I, I see some of you need a demonstration. Let's, let's make that demonstration again for those of you who didn't see it. Okay, it's 20 or 2 1. Let's say this is the same side of the moon that you see every, all the time. We only see one side of the moon, even though it rotates around itself. This is the earth right here, and this is the moon. Now, this thing is going to go around itself exactly one time. But at the same time, it's going to go around the Earth, right? However, because the, the, this rotation around itself is exactly to the second equal to the rotation around the Earth, the people of the Earth will always see one side. So watch this. Here's the moon going around the Earth. It's a satellite. Now, it is going around itself now and going around the Earth at the same time. See that? So when I did this, here I am in the same place, and the people of Earth see only one side, the two eyes, the nose, and the mouth. At the same time, the moon went around itself one time. Did you see this? Everybody see it? See right now, I was facing this way, and when I was over there by Baruni, it was facing that way, and when I went by Mariam, it was facing this way, when I came to Dr. Mahmoud, it was facing this way, it was facing this way, so it made a complete circle around itself. We just have to think of this very minute component in the universe, how God designed the moon for us. And now putting two eyes, a nose, and a mouth, and the very uh, enigmatic expression on the moon, you can see the moon, and if you want to see it sad, you'll see it sad. If you want to see it smiling, you'll see it smiling. It has a, a neutral expression. So whatever mood you have, the moon will, will help you. <laughs> and this is God's design. So this verse here is saying, Shall I seek other than God for wisdom? When he revealed to you this book fully detailed, so all the wisdom we need is in the Quran. And it will be just stupid to go for wisdom, especially to people in the old times. I mean, think of your own grandfather. I'm not insulting you. <laughs> you. Remember how simple he was? And that's our own grandfather. How much knowledge did he have? 
Did he have as much as you? Would you go to him for wisdom? Your own grandfather. Each one of you had a grandfather. So let alone going back 1400 years, seeking other than God for wisdom. This is why God didn't invent all these advances in technology and computers and airplanes and things until the final scripture came. So we cannot seek any wisdom from those people who didn't know much. Just what did they think of the sun coming out every morning? Can you imagine all the superstitions and all the stories, the speculations? They had no schools. Shall I seek other than God for wisdom? When you reveal to you this book fully detailed. And this verse says, the word of your Lord is complete in truth and justice. The word in Arabic is tammet. I put a star under it. Doesn't mean anything else. Cannot be interpreted. Can only be translated. Meaning complete. The word of the Lord is complete in truth and justice. So the question here is, do you believe God or not? It's as simple as that. And God says, if you decide that you don't want to believe me, I'm going to block you out. That's what the Quran says. We've seen it in the last page, I think. Yeah. When I put, when I put an invisible, invisible barrier. You, you don't, there's no wall. You don't see it. It's invisible. But the people who decide they don't want to believe God. But uh, that's not enough. God says I'm going to put shields on their hearts. And in case you, you miss the meaning of the shields, it says to prevent them from understanding the Quran. And deafness in their ears. I mean, total block out. So the question is, do you believe God or not? This is what you tell them. And not believing God is disastrous, as we will see. The consequence of not believing God, there. Those who refuse to believe my revelations and are too arrogant to accept them, the gates of, the, of heaven will never open for them, nor will they ever enter paradise until the camel goes through the needle's eye. Now, what was the biggest needle you've ever seen? I guess Diana can tell us about that. She's got lots of needles in her shop. The biggest needle will not pass uh, a lady's bug. A ladybug. What's that lady? Ladybug. Let alone a camel. So God is saying it's a physical impossibility for people. It's a physical impossibility for people who refuse to believe God's revelations that they enter heaven or the gates of the sky will open for them. There are more consequences than that. Important criterion of divine revelation. Some people will tell you a hadith is also divine revelation, like the Quran. You probably heard this before. But God gave us a criterion in Surah 15, verse 9. It says, my message, my final message, will be perfectly preserved. And by their own admission, the vast majority of hadith and sunnah are false. Are fabrications. They'll admit that, especially if it doesn't agree with them. Hadith and Sunnah are 100% conjecture. And these verses say, Shall I seek other than God for source of wisdom when He revealed to you this book fully detailed? Even the recipients of previous scriptures recognize it as coming from your Lord. The word of your Lord is complete in truth and justice. And then it says at the end, If you obey the majority, they will take you away from the path of God because they follow conjecture. Put a star under it. By their own admission, Hadith and Sunnah are conjecture. They think the Prophet said that. And we say even if the Prophet said that, we follow only the wisdom of God. Obeying the messenger's condition. And this is in the Quran. This verse here says, O Prophet, if the believing women come to you and pledge that they will not idolize anything beside God, nor steal, nor commit adultery, nor kill their children, nor produce any falsehood, nor disobey, obey, disobey you when you are right. Now this, this is condition. And it's a negative of disobey. Which means they should disobey when you are not right. So 
So the Quran is very clear that obeying the Prophet or the Messenger is in what he uttered as Quran, nothing else. Obeying the Messenger is conditional or condition. I like this word, but I looked it up in the dictionary and it said condition equals conditional. <laughs> so I left it there. <clears throat> this verse says anything good that happens to you, Muhammad is from God. And anything bad that happens to you is from you. So the personal opinion of the Prophet may be bad and may cause bad things to happen. On the other hand, Muhammad the Messenger utters only the Quran. Uh, here is a good example where the, the Prophet is... Uh, we are told that the Prophet feared the people instead of fearing God. And uh, certainly God doesn't hate the Prophet. Why is he scandalizing him all over the world through the Quran? Why? God is not scandalizing the Prophet. He is telling us that uh, he has his actions and his words. And these are his opinions. And he can be right or wrong. And he is right only if he agrees with the Quran. Therefore, you people take from him only the Quran. Otherwise, what's the purpose of a verse like this? Here is a, here is a famous example. Obeying the messenger is condition. Now, this example is where the Prophet uh, neglected the poor man, the poor blind person, and gave his attention to the rich man. Is this something we're supposed to do? This is what Sunnah means. I mean, it's not, it's not anything that the Prophet would want us to do. One complete surah illustrates the fact that we are to obey Muhammad only in his Quranic utterances and not in his personal utterances or personal behavior. This rules out the so-called hadith or sunnah as a source, as a legitimate source of religious guidance. Why, why is the whole surah, the, the whole surah is entitled, he frowned. The whole surah is telling us that he made a mistake. Why? He's telling us don't follow his personal actions. And by the, at the end it says, indeed this is a reminder for those who, this is a reminder for those who choose to remember. A reminder of what? That his personal actions and words may be right, may be wrong. The idolization of Muhammad. Well, <laughs> I think we're running out of time, but uh, this verse says that uh, Muhammad is a human being like you, and at the end of the verse says, do not fall in idol worship. This is another verse that says Muhammad is a human being like you, and at the end of the verse says, do not fall in idol worship. Is this coincidence? Both verses end up by saying, do not fall in idol worship. Muhammad is a human being like you, do not fall in idol worship, both of them. The abuse of Quran. This verse here, inna Allah wa malaikatahi wa salluna ala nabi, ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallim al-tasim. God and his angels encourage the Prophet. For you who believe, you too shall encourage him and support him completely. This, this needs a lot of explanation, which I will do later. But uh, they use this to praise the glory of the Prophet day and night. And uh, they forget that the word Prophet, the word Nabi in the Quran always referred to the Prophet during his lifetime, when he was alive, not after his death. And then we're told 13 verses before this that God and his angel, angels makes a lot on the believers, every single one, you and me, if we are believers. God and his angels will make salat on us to take us out of darkness into the light. So I get to this later, but I have to quit. Also this verse, just don't know where to quit, but I better quit here. And uh, maybe we'll, uh, if you have enough votes tonight, maybe we can uh, finish this whole thing and explain it in detail. And then uh, eventually, inshallah, you're going to have it uh, written down and printed. So let us turn to God and ha have, ask Him to encourage us to stick to His word alone and to be satisfied with the wisdom of God alone. Subhu Allah. Repent. Alhamdulillah, wa ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lah. Hopefully this book will give you 
the evidence that you can show anybody supporting the idea that it's wrong. It's a very interesting thing. There was a trial in Syria, a certain Cohen. He was caught spying. I don't remember. Before this attack. Yeah. And uh, the judge was telling Cohen whether uh, he uh, believes in the Bible and so on. He said, Come what he says. Why don't you they beat him up for you? Then he asked him, do you believe in the Talmud? He said, somewhat. And then the, the judge told him, don't you know he said the Talmud? He said, I think it's the Bible. So I keep on it. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. But, but the, the mind of the judge, he said, he said, he said, he's trying to say, the Bible does not talk about they, it's not Zionist, it's yeah. the Talmud that's Zionist, so he has a, yeah, a motive. Yeah, in the Middle East, we know that Talmud is uh, the basis of all evil, as far as the Jewish religion is concerned. It, yeah. And this is what the judge says, that the... They're not aware that so they have the same Talmud. <laughs> the Talmud has... Uh, the Talmud has... Uh, made things harder for, for the Jews. What happened in the This girl will have a stomach ache and she exposes her stomach. That's what we believe. Now, some people it's say that we finish this book rather than the Quranic study. Is that okay by you? Mama? Is it alright by you to ah. just see the slides? I'm going to go on. You don't have to ask me on this thing. <laughs> Terrible. Okay. We just do what we one way or the other one we learn. You know this uh, Jamila she covered her stomach. Because that's how she that's what, I don't know how to wait. She gets she gets the stomach. Yeah, it's really warm in here though. Maybe that's why she's cool when you came, maybe the heat was not warm. It's warm in here because you're wearing this. <laughs> maybe that's maybe I should be going to the right. Oh Jamila. <laughs> Do it like Jamila. <laughs> Jamila? Jamila? You're not going to cry anymore? You're not going to cry if I tell you? As you, you noticed in the Juma, in the Khutbah today, uh, I was trying to rush through these uh, slides, but we're not doing them justice, so yeah, we go slow, we'll just uh, go slow and uh, look at them carefully and also ask questions. Because in the khutbah there isn't much chance for asking questions and ask for clarifications. So we'll just uh, go study this slide very carefully. So situate yourself where you can see the screen. Now, when people go to the Christians and say uh, Christ is, is not the Son of God, is the messenger of God, 
they will accuse you of, uh, of hating Jesus. When you're actually telling the truth. And the same is true with the Muslims. If you go and say, you follow only the Quran, they may accuse you of, uh, of hating Muhammad, which is not true. When you say Jesus is a message of God, you're actually a friend of Jesus. And you, you're going to be with him in heaven. And the person who accuses you of hating Jesus, because he thinks that Jesus is son of God or God or Trinity or whatever, that person, Jesus will disown that person on the day of judgment. And that person will never be with Jesus in heaven. So then, don't let this, don't let them tell you that you don't like Muhammad or you're against Muhammad because you're against Hadith. What happened is they fell in a trap where Satan told them, Muhammad said this and that when he didn't. And the Quran says that the Hadith and Sunnah are fabrication by enemies of the Prophet. So uh, that's why I was starting the first third by saying there is no salvation without obeying the Messenger because the Messenger utters Quran. And you see these biblical instructions when delivering God's messages, messengers do not speak on their own. Here is Moses in Deuteronomy saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kinsmen. To him you shall listen. Now he's referring to Muhammad very clearly because it says, From among your own kinsmen. Now, some people may think that he's referring to Jesus. But Jesus came from among them, not from among their kinsmen. <laughs> so coming from among their kinsmen, Muhammad came from Ishmael. But Jesus came from them, from the line of David. The next uh, statement in Deuteronomy, God says, I will raise up for them a prophet like you, Moses, from among their kinsmen, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. If any man will not listen to my word, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. So this is a very clear commandments to obey the messenger even before, way before he was born. The Quran said obeying the messenger is obeying God. So obviously if the messenger is not God, so he's added, he added the words of God. And in the Gospel of John we see Jesus saying, do you not believe that uh, I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Now this statement is similar to obeying the messenger is obeying God, which we find in the Quran. In other words, if you obey me, you obey God. This is what Jesus said. When you obey me, you obey God. But it doesn't mean that he is God. <laughs> of course, they abuse that statement. But the Father abiding in me does his words. So God puts his words through the mouth of the message. And this is why it is absolutely required that you obey them. In John 16, 13, when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. And then we have verses saying that uh, Muhammad does not speak on his own initiative. That's in Surah 54. 54. Muhammad represented 100% by Quran alone. We sent down to you this book, truthfully, confirming all previous scriptures and superseding them. You shall judge among them according to what is sent down from God, which is defined as this book. And do not follow their wishes if they deviate from the truth. You shall judge among them, this is repetition now, you shall judge among them according to what is sent down from God, which is this book. Do not follow their wishes, and beware, lest they divert you from that which is sent down to you from God, which is defined at the beginning as this book. Would they seek the laws of ignorance? Who is better than God as a lawmaker for those who sincerely believe? Now today I was trying to... Uh, just bring into focus awareness of God and how he designed the moon and the earth and how much did the, the human beings contribute to this, how much did Jesus contribute to the creation of the moon.
or determining the speed of rotation of the earth? How much did Mary contribute to the creation of the stars? There's uh, nothing. And it's just uh, very simplistic and naive and downright stupid to go to humans for wisdom. This, uh, the, the problem of most people is that the lack of awareness of God. They're walking around, driving around the streets, and they think of God as something uh, abstract, you know, that uh, well, God runs the world like uh, the chairman of the board. This person is fired, this person is hired, move this person here, take that person there. Nothing happened without God's permission and control. So you could see, I used the moon as an example. Did you see the moon tonight? You see the two eyes, the mouth, the nose, you see the face? Am I the only one who sees this? Or does everybody see this? <laughs> I see a very clear face. Yeah, so, I mean, you have to uh, know that this is a deliberate design by God. Now, the reason, the reason we see the same side of the moon is that the uh, rotation of the moon is very slow. You know? The moon takes 28 and a half days to go around itself. 28 and a half, which is the length of time it goes from new moon to new moon. And, and it is going very slowly around the third, just going around the third, like I showed you uh, this, today, uh, this afternoon. And the idea is to bring into focus awareness that God runs the world, that designs everything on purpose, everything by exact measure. The number of drops coming out uh, uh, in the rain, is determined by God. The number of drops, even less than that. In Surah 10, God says, not an atom in the heavens or the earth is out of my control, or absent from me. Muhammad forbidden from uttering any religious instructions other than Quran. And this is the verse where it says that the Quran is the utterance of an honorable messenger. It is not the utterance of a poet, or a soothsayer, it's a revelation from the Lord of the universe, and then it says, had he uttered any other religious utterances, he would have punished him severely. And none can protect Muhammad from God's punishment. This is in that uh, verse. Therefore, the Prophet did not utter any religious instructions besides Quran. In this verse, Muhammad ordered never to deviate from Quran. Deviation meant severe punishment. Surah 17. I'll go a little faster in this because we've seen it before. And this is the verse that uh, speaks specifically about Quran, where they ask Muhammad to change the Quran and bring something else. And he's ordered there to say, uh, tell them I can't do that. I, I, I have to deliver only the Quran. And the rest of the verse talks about fabrication of lies and talks about uh, intercession, by the way. You see the last uh, part down there? The guilty never succeed. Yet they idolize beside God those who possess no power to harm them or benefit them and say, these are our intercessors with God, such as idol worship. And uh, the myth of Muhammad, the intercessor, is quite prevalent in the Muslim world. One God, one source. This is a verse in Surah 6, verse 19. See the number verse 19. It says that Muhammad brought the Quran and nothing else. And that if you go to other than Quran, then you are setting up another God besides God. So in your religious instructions, you stick only to Quran. If you go to any other source, anybody, then you are, if you turn an idol worship, then you are in deep trouble. But if you stick to Quran, you're a very happy person. And you guarantee success and security and contentment, happiness and health and wealth and everything. If you stick to Quran alone, because God values that. This is another verse of Surah 17, 1739. It says, you don't set up any other God besides God, by, by going to any other source besides Quran. Quran is not a usual book, it's not like books of mathematics, or physics, or chemistry. Not everybody can uh, read the Quran, not if they are professors of Arabic linguistics, 
they will not understand the world unless they're complete believers. At the same time, we're told that uh, God will put the Quran in the believer's heart, regardless of their language. So don't let anybody shake you up that you don't know Arabic or this or that. Doesn't make any difference. <coughs> when you are sincere, God puts the Quran in your heart. And uh, I say this from experience. I met so many people, sincere believers, who don't know one letter of Arabic, but the whole Quran is in their heart. And they quote the Quran. You can keep that time from it, that. Unless you want somebody to speak. Do you believe God or not? In this page, I have uh, three verses saying, the first one says, we didn't leave anything out of this book. The second one says, uh, shall I seek other than God for wisdom when he sends down to you this book, fully detailed. And the last verse says, the word of the Lord is complete. When you tell them that the Quran is complete or not, they say, yes, the Quran is complete, but, <laughs> there's always but, if, or and. <laughs> and I always tell them, I want you to answer me without if, and, or but. The consequences of not believing God are terrible. Those who do not believe our revelations and are too arrogant to heed them, the gates of the sky never open for them, nor will they ever enter paradise until the camel passes through the Nathan's eyes. We thus require the guilty. Thus it is a physical impossibility for those who refuse to believe God to enter paradise. The Quran is a great blessing or a terrible curse if they don't believe it and follow it. But the blessing is uh, just unimaginable. Important criteria of divine revelation. If they tell you hadith is a divine revelation, you tell them they don't know what they're talking about. Because the criterion is complete preservation. The blessing is evident when they claim that hadith and sunnah are divine revelation. Do they not realize that God Almighty is capable of preserving his revelation? It's a blasphemy to say that hadith and sunnah are divine revelation. So they're accusing God of being unable to protect or keep it.